So during an event at Georgetown University on Monday, Senate Minority Whip Dick Durbin, the Democrat from Illinois, stated that the only way another government shutdown can be avoided is if Republicans in the Senate join Democrats to say, we're just not going to go through this again. Dick Durbin said the only way to avoid another government shutdown is if Republican senators will join Democrat senators and say, we're just not going to go through this again. I think we're close to that. I think there are enough Republicans that are just fed up with it. So we need 60, 47, we need 13 of them. At a high watermark, we had nine. Before this last shutdown was lifted, I think it'll be hard as heck for the president to keep his rank solid among Senate Republicans if he tries to go for another shutdown. So I've got my fingers crossed that we will provide that possibility with votes in the Senate and in the House. We can can fund the government maybe even over his veto if it reaches that point. Dick Durbin added that it is possible to find common ground on immigration, but he says, but I don't know if we can find common ground with this president. You know, Dick Durbin has a point. And this is something I've talked about and alluded before. And it's because of these, you know, Senate Republicans and the neocons and the rhino Republicans who just aren't on board with the Trump policy, the Trump train or anything like that. The never Trumpers as, as you know what they're called. There are still a lot of never Trumpers in the office right now. And a lot of them are hardcore, you know, never Trumpers. Like they never want to give any ground to Trump. You know, whatever he says, you know, they say the opposite. You know, you know, they might as well call themselves Democrats at this point. You know, John McCain is one, Mitch McConnell is one, Mitt Romney's definitely one, and something that has my blood boiling for months now, or since 2016, and maybe a little bit before then. Because you have these Republicans, quote, Republicans in office, who say they're Republicans, who say they're conservatives, but they aren't really conservatives. You see, the Republicans, when Trump first got elected, they had the chance to do anything they wanted anything at all because they had a presidency they had both houses of congress and still they you know that they got in the way of trump they did not want to give him everything and a lot of it was because you know they, they were on the bandwagon in the primaries in the 2016 primaries to be against trump the whole time you know you know they wanted jeb they wanted rubio they wanted carson and another thing that upsets me is that you have these you know conservatives across America who easily vote for these idiots in, in mass, even though these fake Republicans, fake conservatives, have proved themselves to be fake conservatives for years now. Years and years now. Like, you know, here's a prime example. You know, during, you know, when Obama first got elected, the Republicans and stuff, you know, you know, you know, they lost their minds. It was like, oh, he's a communist. He's going to destroy the country, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, Obama was a bad president. But the thing is, the Republicans, in, you know, that they, they were weak, that they, they were pushed around, they were made fun of, they were bumbling idiots. And they were saying for years under Obama, because I can remember this, that, you know, they were saying for years that they want to lower the tax rate, that they want to destroy taxes, they want to do this, they want to do that, they want to stop spending. Ending. And now, you know, again, in 2016, when Trump got elected, they had the presidency and they had the House and the Senate. And what did they do? They did nothing. They even fought Trump on his tax plan for months. Does these kind of actions sound like an actual conservative? No, it doesn't. And it's the same thing with immigration and a government shutdown. Trump has proposed, you know, funding the border wall, you know, stopping illegal immigration. And you have a lot of Republicans in office who are desperately against this. They actively fight Trump on this and, you know, every which way they can. You know, a lot of Republicans, they would agree with the Democrats and say, oh, no, a border wall is useless. It's not going to do anything. You know, we need a virtual wall. You know, immigration isn't that bad. You know, you know, we, we, we don't need any more tax cuts. And it's like they're fake. They're not real conservatives, and yet people still vote for these idiots in mass. But here is the prime example here. The government is set to shut down on the 15th, which is, you know, 10 days away. If, of course, a border deal that does not guarantee, you know, border wall funding does not, you know, get to, you know, Trump's desk. If the, if the Democrats keep fuddling around, they don't want to do it because, you know, they really don't. But eventually, if they don't come to a compromise, the government will be shut down again. And the Democrats and Republicans are desperate, you know, to not have this happen. 
So just like yesterday, I was talking about how um, in the border deal, you know, they didn't want Trump interfering on the negotiations. Well, why do you think that is? Because they don't want him, you know, being the strong man, being, no, it's border wall or, you know, border wall funding or nothing. Because the Republicans want to agree with the Democrats. The, you know, the weak Republicans in office want to give the Democrats just everything they want. Amnesty, DACA deals, you know, no border wall, impeach Trump, you know, they want to give them everything because they're weak, they're pitiful. And this is something that has upset me over the years about the Republican Party. And this is why I don't claim to be a Republican. I'm a conservative, not a Republican, because these Republicans in office are a joke. They are backstabbing. They betray Trump on, you know, for the, for the last three years he's been in office. There have been so many incidences in where these Republicans have backstabbed him, have, you know, stood in his way of getting compromise or something like that. And overall, they have just been a pain in Trump's side. And I said this before also. I said, you know, Trump has a better time, you know, better leeway, better leverage, better headway in negotiating with the Democrats that, you know, than he does with his own party because of this reason. Historically, when, when presidents, you know, get elected, you know, it's either they're Democrat or they're Republican. You know, if, if they're either side, their party stands behind them 100% of the time. 100%. No exceptions whatsoever. Except for Trump. Trump is the only Republican, you know, probably since Reagan, that's, that, you know, that has had uh, Republicans in office, his own party, openly going against him. And I think this is what draw a lot of people to Trump in the first place, because so many politicians are against him. And if you know that the mainstream media other politicians are against him, he must be doing something right. And this is something that was talked about during the 2016 election. You see, the Republicans are a bunch of little wimpy woos. They're, you know, they are scared that if the government shuts down again, all the blame is going to be on them and they're going to run and hide and be little wimps again. Cowardly elephants is what they are. But the Republicans need to stop being little babies, little wimpy woos, and actually charge. But no, you know, they're scared that, you know, the government shutdown is going to be put, you know, all the blame on them again. And it's like, do, do they understand strategy? You know, these are people who are politicians, you know, who are the most slickest, con you know, corrupt people you can think of. You, you would think they would understand some type of political strategy here. But it seems like the Republicans, you know, are clueless just like the Democrats. You know, Trump since 2016 has run circles around the Democrats since then. And they are just, you know, blind donkeys bumping into each other. Like they don't know what to do. And the Republicans, instead of, you know, going along with Trump, backing him and not, you know, not showing no mercy to the Democrats, what do they do? They cower, they whimper, they want to agree with the Democrats that, you know, they want to not have another government shut down. And, and you know, here's the thing. I have no problem with the government being shut down. Nobody here has a problem with the government shutdown because why? Because we are not affected by the government shutdown. And if it means, you know, these idiot politicians go a couple months without pay, who cares? Good. They barely do their job in the first place. They squandle and embezzle, you know, millions of taxpayer dollars anyway. And then the only time that they're in Congress or something like that, they, they don't want to vote for Trump's policies, that they want to cower, that they want to, you know, run away from it. You know, just like the, you know, Dick Durbin said, you know, he only needs another 13 more Republicans to ignore Trump's veto. The Democrats should have no Republicans on their side, period. And this is the issue, again, I was talking about how, you know, when there's a president, his party backs him up. Do you think when Obama was in office that he had any Democrats who went against him? Absolutely not. Every Democrat from here to Bangalore was in favor of everything that Obama did. Not one questioned him whatsoever. And again, no Republicans were actively going against what Bush was doing during his administration. And the reason for, you know, Republicans going against Trump is because, you know, you know, I've said this before, Trump is not playing the standard political game. Because the standard thing is, you know, you, you make a big hype during the campaign, you make all these promises, and then as soon as you get elected, you forget all of that. And, and that's the standard of any president since, you know, the 80s. 
And that's what, you know, a lot of people were expecting, a lot of political people and people in the higher ups like that, they were expecting Trump to play the same game. He was talking a big, you know, game during the campaign. And then as soon as he got elected, he was going to you know, do the whole presidential thing. And it turns out he didn't play that game. He was actually getting stuff done. And they didn't like that. And they still don't like that. I mean, look how much Trump has accomplished during his first term alone. Trump has accomplished more in his first term than Bush, Obama, and Clinton did in all of their years combined. And that is not an exaggeration. But that all being said, you guys let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.